This is the fourth video in a series covering the Martley Pool College Ladies Football Database. We're now going to look at Activity 2. Just a recap on Activity 1, in that we created the tables and the relationships working from the design that we previously created. We're now looking at Activity 2, and this is all about table structures and validation. It recommends you spend 45 minutes or up to 45 minutes on this. You can probably get through it quicker because we've done quite a lot of preparation work already. We need to create efficient table structures based on Activity 1 and the data shown in Figure 1. The table structures must use suitable validation to meet these requirements. So, a record for a player will not save without the player's date of birth being present. A record for a player will not save without the player's initial in the correct format. Remember, that was a one initial and it's got to be uppercase. A record for a player will not save if the player is assigned an invalid mentor. A record for player statistics will not save if the player rating is below the accepted range and a record for a player statistics will not save if the player rating is above the accepted range. And again, in the scenario, it said that player rating was to be between 1 and 5. A record for player statistics will not save without a valid position. And then we're going to input the data given in Figure 1 into the database. Now again, a quick reminder here when you input this data, you need to make sure you put the data in for the tables with no foreign keys first, then the table with one foreign key, and then finally that table with two foreign keys. You're going to evidence your table structures and validation using screen pins using the given activity2.rtf template. And those are provided for you in the exam. So the first validation is a record for a player will not save without the player's date of birth being present. So I've opened up DBL player. I'm going to click on the date of birth field and the validation rule is is not null. The validation text, so this is the message to the user if they leave this date of birth field empty. Place date of birth must be entered. The next validation is a record for a player will not save without the player's initial in the correct format. So click on player initial and for this we're going to use an input mask. We're going to use the greater than sign which forces any characters that are keyed in at the keyboard into a place and the letter L which represents a character as in A, B, C, D, E, F, G for example. You could put a validation rule on here is not null as well just to make sure that the user does enter that initial. Save the table. The next validation, a record for a player will not save if the player is assigned an invalid mentor. If we just go back to that mentor field and click on the lookup tab, you can see we've already got, let me just close this down, we've already got a combo box which is based on a table and the row source is select TBL Mentor Mentor ID from TBL Mentor. So that's actually set that validation up for us already when we created that relationship and we ticked the enable data in referential integrity. The next validation is a record for player statistics will not save if the player rating is below the accepted range and a record for a player statistics will not save if the player rating is above the accepted range. The range here was 1 to 5. So I've opened up TBL player position. I'm clicking in player position rating. Coming down to the validation and here the rule is between 1 and 5 and then the validation text player rating must be 
between 1 and 5. And then the final validation is a record for a player statistics will not save without a valid position. So if, again, if we click in this field, player position ID, click on the lookup tab. Again, you can see we've got a combo box. It's based on a table. And for the row source, it's select TBL position, position ID from TBL position. So that means we won't be able to key in an invalid position. We'll only be able to select one that appears in the table TBL position. Save your evidence of the table structures as a PDF in your folder for submission as activity 2 underscore registration number underscore surname underscore first letter of first name. Now, you're advised to spend up to five, 45 minutes on this activity. I probably get through that quicker than 45 minutes, but that's a good thing because it means you'll have some spare time, maybe to spend on things that you're having a little bit of difficulty with. In the next video, I'll be looking at creating the first query for activity three.